Hello and welcome to the second lesson of the fretboard navigation workshop. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about how you can access chords over the fretboard. I'm going to share with you uh, kind of like my method and what I teach my students. And I hope it's going to help you uh, find your way around the fretboard. So when it comes to uh, fretboard vis uh, visualization, um, when it comes to chords, I like to see it from a perspective of root notes. Okay. Um, uh, these are obviously cage chords. Okay, all, all chords belong to the cage system in some way. Okay, I'm not talking about super exotic chords. I'm talking about like basic fundamental guitar chords. All come from the cage system, and they are just a modification of the major cage system chord. Right. So, if let's say you know we have a okay uh, G major chord, cage chord, okay? and if you flat the third, right. You have your minor chord, right? Okay. So all chords are basically fundamentally a a a, a kind of like a modification of the uh, major cage chord, right? Then if you think about the uh, major scale, all chords are built on that as well. Okay. So you have, you know, your root third and fifth for your major chord and root flat flat three five. So understanding chord construction from a major scale perspective is really important. Okay. So make sure you know your major scale and make sure you understand chord construction based on the major scale. Okay. Okay. Step one. And then, um, so what I like to do um, when I'm looking for chords all over the fretboard is I'm always looking for that root note. Okay. So this is, if, if let's say G major, okay, uh, is what we're trying to play. Um, I'll be looking for the G. So if I have a G here and G here. Now with every G, okay, I, there, is, there is a cage chord that's tied to it. Okay. Um, so in this situation, this is the G shape, okay? So with this root note, okay, now I have two, right? I have two chords I can use, okay? And the next root, the closest root is here, right? So this is G here, and this is, so it is cage chord, but I'm seeing it from a root note perspective, okay? I'm not thinking, you know, this chain that the cage system um, teaches, okay? This chain is very important to help you understand how to navigate the fretboard when you're going up and down. Very important, okay? Um, but I like seeing chords based on root, okay? It's way more effective that way. Uh, when I see a, uh, a chord, I can quickly just attack it based on the root note, okay? So I'm gonna give you an exercise here that you can that you can uh, practice at home, okay? So start with your G, okay? And play your for G chord. Now play your G bar chord. Okay, now find your G in your next string, which is here. Now play your next cage shape, which is here, which is the C shape, right? So I don't like to think about it as a cage um, chord, but I like to see it as patterns. So you kind of memorize the patterns, okay? And if you want to do minor, like this, okay? So I memorize it based on patterns. So I know if the root is on the, the low E string, I have these two patterns for major. If it's on this string, I have this pattern, and I have this pattern, or this, okay? If the root is on a D string, I have this pattern, and I also have this pattern. And if you go high up the neck, you have this pattern, and you can also have this. Okay. And if it comes when it comes to triads, uh, I'm I'm also looking at root notes. So, uh, for example, like this is G right here. I know this position number one. Okay. And then if you have a G, uh, have a G here, right? So, okay, position number two, and then you have a root here. On your high E string, which is this. So, so, okay. So, um, so my tip is basically, you know, make sure you access chords based on root note. Okay, um, and make sure you know your fretboard really well. Make sure you're able to spot all your G's or your A's or B's, whatever chord it is that you are trying to access, and um, and then you go from there. Okay. Um, so that's kind of like my, my my biggest tip, okay? And then when you're trying to to uh, play chords in, let's say, you know, someone says, you know, I like what you're doing, but, you know, someone is playing the same chord here, right? So G, D, C, let's say something really simple, okay? And, you know, and then, well, you, you, you do it here, right? G, right? And then D, and C, right? Okay, and then your music director or whoever that you are serving in music is saying, hey, we need something a little more travelly, okay? Like uh, everyone's really playing down here 
and the keyboard's playing down here and you know the rhythm can you can you do something a little bit higher okay so that's how you would do it you would find your root okay so G like for me I'll probably use this one here okay um, this G right here that's a G right here okay so that's uh, doesn't sound so I probably would use like that okay that's that's probably the G I would use this G which is a piece of this bar chord right here okay so I will do this C uh, G okay G and then next chord is D right so I would be like okay okay this root note here I see this D right here and I'll instantly play this or you can also do this or you can so you can do this or you can do like okay and then the next chord is C right so you have your C you can obviously play your okay, uh, this shape okay but the root note I'm looking at the root right here okay and I'm like okay or I can just play like this. Okay. So this is how I C chord playing. And obviously, as you um, as you make you do modifications of your um, your cage patterns. Okay, you get your minor chords, you get your minor seventh, your major sevens, um, etc. Okay. Okay. So let's say let's say we have a um, D. Okay. Okay, this is your, your D major chord, okay? And if you flat your third, okay? One, two, three, flat your third, and you have your minor chord, okay? And if you play your flat seven with that, then you have, okay, minor seven, right? And if you have a major chord, okay? And if you play your um, major seventh uh, interval with that, then you have your major. So, so basically what I'm doing is just, you know, making sure that you know your, your your major cage chord, right? And then the rest are just modification, right? Based on the the formula, uh, interval formula of the chord, okay? So I hope this makes sense and I, I really hope this has helped. Um, this will, you know, the, the main thing is making sure that you know all your notes in your fretboard, memorize your fretboard really well, okay? Um, you can possibly check out my course. Okay, I have an incredible course on fretboard memorization. Guaranteed that you'll learn your fretboard. Um, so making sure you know every note in your fretboard, number one, and number two, making sure you know your shapes, okay? As far as, um, as far as chord playing goes, okay? Like I talked about the shapes, right? Okay, making sure that you know your shapes, okay? So that when you see a root note, you know what shapes are available to you, okay? Based on the root, okay? That's how I teach it. And also when it comes to Try it, same thing, okay? Memorize it based on shapes, okay? Practice it based on shapes. The root note that's here, then this is what's gonna, the root note's here, then this is what it sounds. If this is the root note's here, then this is the shape, okay? So that's how um, that's how I navigate the fretboard, and this gives me total freedom, okay, when I'm playing chords over the fretboard. I really hope you uh, enjoyed this lesson, and I really hope this has helped you. In the next lesson, I'm gonna talk about how to combine the two things that we talked about, okay, soloing all over the fretboard and chord playing all over the fretboard, how can we blend the two to create more dynamic guitar playing? I'll see you there.